Answer, hi, welcome to my channel. So today we have a reading for you, no particular subjects. Um, you may have taken issue, something we know, something we don't know, recent past advice and potential outcome. At the end, there'll be an opportunity for an extended where we'll dive in deeper. You can watch this for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Mars, Mercury, North Node, or if any of those planets are currently transiting your fourth house, this could be for you. Um, you know the drill, thank you for all the support means the world thank you very much indeed cross watchers you're more than welcome message may well be for you all the information is in the description box just hit the more button below private reads are open briefly for the next couple of weeks tops and then i'm taking a break because i put on the um community board i have back-to-back -back energies the uh, new moons in my 12th house because of the size of my 12th house the old version of me would have continued and buried myself into the ground um but um, the wiser me uh, recognises that the universe will just tempt me out if I don't. So, bit of a break. So if you do want to get in for a private read, you've got two weeks. And um, they're filling up pretty quick, so dive in if you want. Let's see, let's do one more. Okay, Cancer. What is going on? We have the Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups. Ooh, actually, this, this, this is a good thing. Ten of Cups, it's happiness, it's joy. Um, but I kind of feel like there's going to be some sort of a cathartic release. Because the Ten of Cups is, 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 is Mars in Pisces. Mars is the Tower. Pisces is the Hangman. Um... Or if we look at it in a way, you know, Pisces represents the 12th house. I feel like there's going to be a very big cathartic release of something here. Like deep emotional cups of, cups of emotions. Ooh. Ooh, I wonder if Pluto's going to show up. I almost feel like so you guys rule the moon. Hmm. What do we know? What don't we know? Recent past. Advice. Okay. And potential outcome. Nice. Okay. Bottom of the deck, we have the moon <laughs> and the tower. <laughs> you just can't make it up. Um, there's a cathartic release here. I, I almost feel like with the Five of Swords, Venus and Aquarius and the Queen of Swords, and Judgment and the Queen of Cups and the Four of Swords, Six of Cups, Eight of Cups, High Priestess, Knight of Cups, Five of Cups. Yeah, this feels like you might find deep emotions, um, deep feelings that can overwhelm you. But if we take it, if we if we look at it from a different angle, we can really alchemize this. We can. This is it, it, so for me. This is this is suggesting here that there's going to be. I believe there's going to be a cathartic release. You know, the Mars in Pisces Tower hits the Hangman. Um, the Hangman rules the twelfth house. This this is subconscious. So. And this is why I felt Pluto, especially with the moon coming out. You guys rule the moon. And in, in astrology, if there's ever like a transit with the moon, in fact, the, the moon will be conjuncting uh, Pluto in a few days. Um, and it can, it feels like there's going to be an interaction or an event in your life that might trigger some sort of maybe a memory uh, or, or an emotion. Um but this is this is energy and emotions that are buried deep in your subconscious. So be very mindful of who, what is happening in your environment right now. Something is going to, something is going to trigger you. I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to bring up a, a lot of deep feelings and overwhelm. In what area of your life is going to be different for all of you? This could be your friendship groups. This could be feeling a um, um, financial lack or just an, an energetic lack. Um, but what's going to happen here is there's going to be an interaction. There's going to be um, an event. It's going to trigger 
something within you that you're going to be really feeling your feel feelings that's going to be to a point of overwhelm but this is a good thing because if we bring it to the surface we can recognize it now what we're aware of is the eight of swords the eight of swords is a, a, it's a mental prison so the eight of swords could indicate overthinking this could be something that happens in your life and you immediately go into some sort of overthinking aspect What we're not aware of is the Three of Cups. The Three of Cups, I kind of feel like there's, there's, there's joy that comes from this. Whatever this is, is, is a good thing. You know, because um, the Three of Cups is Mercury in Cancer. So it's, 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 it's the magician meets the chariot. It's kind of like putting the emphasis on how you communicate. How do you communicate in these energetic, overwhelming emotions? Do you bottle it up? Do you just sit in the corner and overthink? Stew over what should have been said, what what I wanted to say? Do you put your energy... So the difference when, when it comes to the human... Um, when it comes to our bodies, when it comes to our emotions, when it comes to our nervous system, your body doesn't know the difference between a memory or what's physically happening. So every time you go into this shutdown mode of overthinking, overanalyzing feeling deep emotions, not knowing what to do with it, your body is putting straight, putting itself straight back into this fight or flight energy. And that just keeps you stuck in a loop. Recent past, we have the Five of Pentacles. The Five of Pentacles is it's Mercury in Taurus. Um, so the Magician meets the Hierophant. But I kind of feel like there's an energy of shadow here. Because if we pick the Magician card one, pick the Hierophant card five, put them together, it's 15, it's the devil, it's shadow energy. And whatever that shadow energy leaves you feeling depleted. So what were the old ways of doing? Because the old ways clearly aren't working, Cancer. <laughs> the overthinking, the emotional overwhelm, the lack of communication. Maybe when we feel like this, we communicate in a, in a very emotional way. You know, sometimes it's like, um, it's like people when they, they try and have an emotional conversation and they end up crying during that emotional conversation when you know it doesn't really warrant it you know if or if you get angry or frustrated with somebody you try and get your point across yeah and you can end up crying in, in the in the aspect look like you're a crazy person if I mean, it's just it's just pent up it's like we, we don't know what to do with this energy your advice is the king of swords the king of swords is for me it could be a couple of things. The King of Swords could be a therapist. This could be a very wise therapist. King of Swords is, is you know, Kings and Queen of Swords when it comes in, especially the Queen of Swords is the other side of this Five of Swords. Um, they, they, they are very, very good at listening. Maybe this is a listening skills sort of test. You know, maybe we just don't get involved into these overreactions of this stuff and we just sit back and listen. Um, but I kind of feel like the, the advice of the King of Swords here is, is asking you to reflect on the psychological patterns that are servicing here. Um, because it's, this, is, this is giving you a, an opportunity to completely transform your emotional life. The outcome is the temperance. Temperance is alchemy. Tem temperance is taking a little bit of this energy, a little bit of that energy and having that perfect balance. It's equal give and take. Well, it's not equal give and take, but it's, it's, it's give and take in the perfect measurements. It feels like this is a very cathartic reading and it, it, it works out great with temperance and the moon at the bottom. This is alchemizing deep emotions. This is recognizing where we, it could be a perfect example as I discussed at this um, at the beginning. If we take temperance and the moon, moon in Sagittarius is the nine of wands. The nine of wands is I'm, I'm, the, I'm the warrior, I'm the healer, I can keep going. I can battle through the 12th house. No, I can't. The universe will just go, shut up, Gareth, sit, sit down, you need to rest. And this could be it. This could be, you know, recognising where we try and power through something. Maybe we bury our feelings. Interesting, I'm staring at the eight of swords of the overthinking. It's reminding me of... The holistic psychologist. If if those of you that have difficulties with um, um, with sort of any emotions in, in terms of um, 
the psychology of things. Do give her a follow. She's very insightful. But she said something about overthinking the other day. Let me just find her. Here we go. No, you can't stop overthinking. Here's why. Overthinking is a natural impulse when our body feels a threat. When we're afraid, unsure or insecure, overthinking becomes our coping mechanism. This causes us to freeze or procrastinate. We call it getting stuck in our head. If our mind keeps us locked in a loop of thinking, we don't have to do. We don't have to fail off. If our mind keep. OK, if our mind keeps us locked in a loop of thinking, we don't have to do. We don't have to fail or feel uncomfortable. When we try to think of every single aspect of every decision, what we're trying to do is keep ourselves safe. Overthinking keeps us in the familiar safety of our lives. To break free from overthinking, we have to accept that it will always be there, that our mind will create tons of narratives and worst case scenarios, and that none of our thoughts are necessarily true. Most people don't follow their calling, their desires or dreams because their mind has told them it's dangerous and they fully believe whatever their mind says. When you notice yourself overthinking, take some deep breaths. Notice how your mind is attempting to talk you out of something uncomfortable. Then take action, even, through, even though you're afraid. Our mind doesn't always know what is best for us. Our mind has one sole objective, to keep us alive. It's up to us to make choices beyond our mind to create our own fulfilment. We all overthink. Our work is to notice it and do the difficult thing anyway. Do you struggle with overthinking? Recognise what that is and transmute that. And that is a very cathartic energy here. And it's going to allow you to be the magician. Because if we look, we've got the magician um, in lack and the magician in... Three of Cups magician in... in, in, in so Mercury in Cancer is magician meets chariot. This is willpower. This is drive, determination, ambition. So something is going to come in. It's going to be a very cathartic release. Like I say, it's something to do with the tower and the hangman. Tower is with the moon and the five of swords. So this could be somebody pushing you buttons. <laughs> but it's going to put you in fight or flight. And it's going to have you overthinking. It's going to go back to old old ways. Um, look at the five of swords in a different uh, aspect here. The five of swords, Venus in Aquarius. Yes, it's defeat. Yes, it's struggle. Yes, it's anger, frustration, arguments. But if we look at it for the astrological point of view, it's feminine energy, healing. Empress, star card. So give it a new narrative. Uh, I want to see where that magician is, don't I? I do indeed. And the nine of wands as well. For that moon in Sagittarius. Forgive my pace at this. It's a new deck and I'm still trying to get my head around it. <laughs> Interesting. So the magician is with the um, page of cups and the devil. The shadow energy of that um, kind of one and five put together of that five of pentacles we spoke of earlier. Um, the page of cups with the devil, for me, it could be escapism, you know, where we um, we, we turn to a, um, maybe a substance to, to not have to deal with this energy or... Uh, it could be that kind of naive way of dealing with emotions. You know, the pages are just pages. You need to be... In this deck, um, the King of Cups is obviously the highest point. I'm not saying the King is better than Queen, just the hierarchy. And it's called Master. Master of your emotions. Um, and the other side of the uh, Page of Cups is King of Pentacles, which in this deck is called the Alchemist, which is Temperance as your outcome. Definitely, um, you're going to have your emotional buttons pushed here, I believe. But it's going to be it's it's, it's going to be worth it. It'll make sense at the end.
happens to the Nine of Wands? Why don't we it? Yeah, I'm past it. Never mind. Here we go. Nope, it's a pair of ones. Nine of Wands is with the Two of Pentacles, the Wheel of Fortune meets the Devil and the Nine of Pentacles, Venus in Virgo, so the Empress meets the Hermit. Look at look at this in a completely different aspect. You're going to be triggered. There's going to be something, but you get to alchemize it. And when you do, you're going to have, you're going to completely tra transform your emotional life. I love it. Fantastic. In your extended, we're going to look at what this trigger is. We're going to, who's, what's poking uh, uh, the, the bear here? Um, see if we can dive into that. If you can join me, fantastic. If not, let me know if it resonates. Mars in Pisces, um, Jupiter in Gemini, Mercury in Cancer, Mercury in Taurus, Sagittarius, Cancer Pisces, Aries Scorpio, Venus in Aquarius, Scorpio, Libra, Jupiter in Libra, Sun in Scorpio. I think we've got swords, we've got cups, we've got pentacles and we got ones eventually okay let me know see you soon bye